Well, good evening. It is good to see everybody here. Thanks for being here tonight. Would you stand with me, please? We're going to begin this evening singing about that blessed assurance that we can only have through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's stand together and let's all sing this great song together. Everybody on the first. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Amen. You may be seated. We do welcome you tonight. Once again, it's another Wednesday. Amen. And uh, to be able to come to God's house and uh, open up God's Word here in just a moment and see what He has for us this evening. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, please be praying for all that's taking place here on the property here at Lighthouse Baptist Church. And it's good to see the kids and uh, running around. I looked out the window and saw the teenagers out there. And I know people's here for their discipleship classes. And so it's exciting. Wednesday nights are always exciting here at Lighthouse Baptist Church. A couple announcements I do want to make mention of. Ladies, I hope that you've signed up for the Ladies Bible Study on tomorrow evening. And uh, that begins at 6.30. Is that right, Miss Spring? 6.30? And, uh, and so I do want to remind you of that. And uh, that will be on tomorrow. I know it'll be a great time. I know Miss April Shearer will be teaching that. And uh, so that'll be a great, great night. That'll be on tomorrow evening. And then please be praying for our teenagers on Friday. Uh, they have an event. I believe it starts at 10 o'clock at night and it goes throughout the night through the, uh, uh, into the wee hours, I think, till 6 o'clock that morning. And, uh, and uh, so it's their student ministry all-nighter. And I know Pastor Job is looking forward to that. Please be praying. I know they have some visitors planning on coming and he'll be presenting the gospel. And so uh, pray for them. Uh, they'll be at different places. They're going to the written out the skating rink here in town and then they'll be going over to First Baptist there of Jackson and using the gymnasium there for a little bit also and then be back here on the property and so I get the wonderful privilege of driving the bus for them and uh, throughout that night and uh, so anyhow well it's going to be a great evening and uh, please be praying for them also coming up on May 4th is our family outreach I do want to remind you of that our Awana Awards night and I always enjoy that our children have been working hard this past year learning verses and their songs and, uh, and the teachers always do so well with them. And so uh, you'll be able to hear from our children. And that'll be on a Wednesday, the May 8th. And so I do uh, want to remind you of that. But uh, thank you so much for being here. I, I want to mention our missionary uh, for this week. And it's Manuel Gomez. And uh, he is missionary to Mexico doing a phenomenal job. And uh, they were here several years ago. Uh, him and his family and his children sang. And uh, we began the year running with our, it's called the Rias, I, I think I might be saying that right, I don't know, the Rias Festival. This yearly celebration, uh, uh, Brother Gomez says, is a lively one. It includes games, skits, crafts, songs, the preaching of the gospel, and a special gift for every child that comes. We provide reading glasses and medicine for adults as well. Uh, and so he talks about that. He said, our team traveled to seven communities throughout the countryside there where he's at. And uh, the gospel thundered through the top of the mountain by the lakeside and across the soccer field. Singing and laughter could be heard from afar off. And they came from hundreds, hundreds of them just came, uh, came from everywhere, village by village, children, parents, grandparents came as the word spread everywhere we went. And, uh, and uh, people suffering poverty and violence uh, came. 
and uh, heard the gospel message. Ladies began to weep, men bowing their faces, and children uh, couldn't contain their smiles as a ray of light and hope begins to pierce darkness. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and in shadow of death, light is sprung up. They went on to say over 700 children, 700 children prayed and asked Christ to save them. 250 adults made professions of faith as well. And so they were praising the Lord. I would say that was a pretty good conference. Amen. And, uh, and so praise the Lord for what Brother Manuel Gomez is doing there. Uh, there in Mexico, he did ask to be praying about uh, church buildings and things like that as they're uh, working there in the communities and different areas. And so it's pretty exciting just to be able to be a part. Church, we have a small part in this ministry here. And so uh, that's pretty exciting. Out of all the, uh, the missionaries that we support, it's a blessing just to know that we have a, a part in each one of these ministries. And so I'm so thankful for that. I talked to Robbie for a little while. And, uh, you know, isn't it pretty cool that he can be all the way in Argentina and we can talk by face? Uh, we can see each other, you know, FaceTime. And, uh, you know, that's something that we, you know, we didn't think about. The Jetsons taught us that years ago. You remember, you remember the Jetsons. And we thought, yeah, that's never going to happen. But here we are. And uh, Robbie's in Argentina. I'm here in America. And we are looking at each other face to face, being able to talk, no wires attached or anything. And that's pretty awesome. He was in his home. Matter of fact, he was showing me around his house and all the different things and stuff. And he is so excited. I said, Robbie, would you put a video together real quick and give our church just a quick update and uh, they've uh, of them finally getting able to get in their home and stuff. So I believe we have that there, Brother Brett. If you could play that video there of Robbie. This is from today. Hello, church family. Again, just wanted to uh, send y'all another uh, little quick update video here uh, over the past couple weeks. Uh, we have uh, finally been able to move into our house, you see here, and so we're standing on the side of the house, and uh, we are uh, very slowly uh, getting things uh, settled in here. Uh, everything is a process here, and so it just takes some time to be able to, to get everything set up and delivered and all those things, and so uh, we're just thankful now to be able to uh, sleep in our own house, in our own bed again, and so just thankful for all that the Lord has done. Please continue to uh, just pray as we uh, continue to get settled in here and continue to figure out um, our vehicle situation. Um, again, it just it takes forever uh, to be able to get anything done here. And so uh, hopefully by the end of this week, we will have uh, our vehicle settled. And so just pray that uh, everything will continue to be going well with that. But we sure do love you all and we thank you for uh, everything that you have done for us and how you continue to uh, keep updated with us and uh, pray for us. And we love you all. Love you guys. Thank you. All right. And that's pretty awesome. And so that was, that was, I mean, fresh all, I mean, that is a fresh tape there as far as it. He just sent that to me just about an hour or so ago. And so be praying for them. You know, things sometimes that we take for granted, you know, you go to another country and it's just a lot, like he said, he said, Pastor, he said, I said, how's language school? He said, we haven't been able to start yet. And uh, he said, we, we were just finally able to get into the home and uh, they'll be working on getting their vehicle. And he said, everything we're just learning, it takes time. And it's just a lot of red tape they have to go through. And they're hoping by the end of the month to be able to begin their language school. And so be praying about that. That's really important to him, of course, and getting that going. Of course, they're working in a church already. And uh, uh, Lauren, actually, um, the music uh, uh, gentleman leading the music Sunday wasn't able to be there. Lauren led the music for the church there. And so I told you, on the mission field, you're going to lead the music. You're going to be doing everything. And, uh, and so uh, anyhow, they are already uh, jumped in and, and serving. And so let's continue to be praying for them. Let's remember the Manuel Gomez family as well. And so let's open up with the word of prayer. And then Pastor Matt will come and lead us in another song. Father, we do love you. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done for us. Another opportunity. We can come to your house tonight. Father, I thank you for Brother Robbie and Miss Lauren, what you're doing there. I know they're excited. I know they're ready to, uh, Lord, to be able to jump in language school and getting some things started there. So, God, I just pray you just continue to work out all the details. Uh, Father, for with the vehicle, uh, Lord, thank you for the home that you have provided. Uh, Father, other things that they need to get settled and taken care of, Lord God. And so, God, I pray you just work out all those things. I pray. Father, for the Gomez family, we thank you for them there in Mexico. Lord, for their ministry there. Lord, just a wonderful thing to hear of all these that have put their trust in you. And Father, we rejoice in that. And God, I pray that you'd help them now as they minister to these uh, new Christians, Lord, as they continue to minister in those surrounding villages and towns, Lord God. I pray for the building, uh, Lord, that they're looking at and trying to uh, uh, take care of. I pray, Father, that you just meet needs there. 
Father, we do love you. We thank you for tonight. Thank you for all that's going on on this campus here, Lord God, uh, from our children, our teenagers, adults. Lord God, I just pray that you'd bless tonight. We love you. We thank you. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. And this song says, uh, Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Let's think about that, please. There will never be a sweeter story Story of the Savior's love divine Love that brought Him from the realms of glory Just to save a sinful soul like mine Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful it is the universe around me, reaching to the farthest soul away, saving, keeping love it was that found me, that is why my heart can truly say, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, 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 oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful wonderful it is to me thank you so much you may be seated all right well this is prayer time if you've got your prayer bulletins go ahead and take those out tonight and we'll look at those together and then first up we're going to look at the verse for april and it's jeremiah 29 11. and let's say that verse together as i read it tonight so let's say that verse together The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And you know what that expected end is? Heaven with the Lord forever and ever. That's what that expected end is, and that's what what the Lord has for us, and we can rejoice in that uh, every single day. Well, the ones we're praying for this this week, uh, first up is uh, Mr. Ron Bennett. Uh, Brother Ron's been sick for six or eight weeks now, been sick for a long time, and so he's He's just been very sick, so please pray for him and, and uh, his wife, Bobby, and uh, pray for those two. Uh, they've not been able to be at church for a while just because he's been so so sick, but uh, please pray for them. Pray for the family there, if you would, and then also for, for Scott Cooksey with massive heart attack, and this is Rhett Shearer's brother-in-law, so please pray for, uh, for this one as well. Uh, I was going to see if Miss April had an update on him, but she's not in here right now, so uh, we'll, we won't. I won't know anything further than what we've got here. For those under salvation, we want to pray for each one of these. And I know I talked to someone tonight that said, I've got some other names. There's several people that I've had on this list that have gotten saved. It's been amazing to watch the people that we put on the list get saved. And I've got several others we want to add, and we're going to do that. We'll have some others on here, and we'll be praying for them as well. Don't ever stop praying for somebody to get saved. Uh, there's been people we prayed for for 20 years, and after 20 years they got saved. and It was all worth it, you know, so we want to continue to do that. For those under physical needs, we want to pray for each one of those this week. And then cancer-related as well. Pray for those, please. Under additional prayer requests, does anyone have an additional prayer request we can add tonight? Anything? Miss Lavinia. All right, you've got Gail King and Martha Roberts, and both these ladies have fallen. So please pray for both of them, okay? Anybody else? Anybody else have another prayer request we can add tonight? Yes, ma'am, Miss Vicki. Okay, Miss Vicky's Francis, uh, Miss Vicky's aunt, Francis Cameron. Is that right, Francis Cameron? She's 95 years old and she's also fallen. So please pray for these these three ladies that have fallen recently. Pray the Lord bring them back up, lift them back up. Anybody else have anything? I don't see any other hands. Okay, let's look on the right hand side of the page then. As I always, want to pray for our past our pastor and pray, uh, please pray for the staff and their families too. We appreciate that. 
And then as we're praying for one another, let's also pray some uh, specific things, unity, protection, souls to be saved, preachers and missionaries sent right out of our own church. And then our missionaries, Robbie and Lauren Prater, we pray for them each and every week. And it was good to get an update uh, from them uh, today about their, their, their new home and all that kind of thing. So that, that's good to see them again, too. Our community servants, which include our civil servants, elected officials, U.S. military and community servants, pray for them each and every week. And then our student that we're praying for this week is Tanner Shearer. And you've got Tanner's uh, contact information there. So if you have a chance and can, if you're available to do that, maybe put a card in the mail to him or something. Some way you can just encourage him uh, this week as he's there uh, doing his studies there at school. Uh, also, our expectant mothers, we're down to one right now, Miss Noelle Patrick. She's due this month, uh, so please continue to pray for her and a safe delivery there. And then the families that we're praying for this week are Chad and Diane Clowers and Cassie May, and then also Caden and Lainey Shearer and Baby Farah. So we're praying for those two families this week. Our ministry of the week is our Connection Groups ministry, and if you're not part of a connection group, let me just encourage you to do that. That's where you, that's where you make your better connections in the church. I mean, we kind of know everybody in the church, but, but it's, it's a time that you can really get to, to know people, learn people, and connect with, with people, and you can do that in the connection group. So I, I, I just encourage you, if you've not been part of a connection group, uh, to find one and get in it. It's a good thing to do. And then also our, uh, our connection group teacher this week that we're uh, praying for is Miss April Shearer, and that's the Friendship Circle Connect class. So we're going to pray for them. And then, uh, you, you know, as Pastor Chad was talking about Manuel Gomez uh, tonight, I thought about that. How often do you hear that that a missionary on the field, that, that they're going from place to place and, and doing different things, have nearly a 1,000 people saved? That's what, you know, when you talk about 700 children and over 250 adults, that's right about 1,000 people that got saved because of that ministry. Uh, I say that's a good ministry to support, don't you? It's a good ministry. So please continue to pray for them. 1,000 people uh, saved, that, that's, a, that's a great report right there. And then uh, our card of encouragement tonight would go to Ron and Bobby, uh, Ron and Bobby Bennett. And like I say again, Bobby Bennett has been sick for a very long time and just not doing well at all. So please continue to pray for him if you would. Please don't forget about our missionaries on the back. We want to pray for our missionaries each and every week. And uh, right now, you know, I was thinking about this today. Not only we, we say we support 78 missionaries. We really support 78 missionary families. That's a lot more people than 78 missionaries, isn't it? It's 78 families. And so that's a lot of people, and they all have needs. You know, their kids have needs. The, the wives and husbands have needs. They all have needs, and a lot of times those needs can't be met in a foreign country like they can here. Uh, a lot of those foreign countries just don't have Chick-fil-A, you know? Sometimes it's hard to get peanut butter over there, wherever they might be. And so, you know, we don't think about that so much, but a lot of th- it's just it's just those needs that, uh, things that they get accustomed to, things that they they love since, since they were a kid and they can't get it anymore. So there's a lot of things that we can pray for as we pray for our missionaries, and I just want to encourage all of us uh, to do that as we pray for them this week. Anybody else have anything real quick that we can add? Anything at all? Okay, Brother Pat Farrell, would you pray for us tonight? Bobby, she's the caregiver. 
others. But we, uh, we know that we have one left. We've been so blessed at our church to be having so many healthy babies born into our church family. Lord, we just pray that you continue to do that. And then, Lord, we do pray once again for our college students, Lord, that are away. Uh, what an encouragement it is, Lord, for them to hear from uh, their home church and know that they're not forgotten. Uh, just to see, receive a word of encouragement. Now, Lord, we do think about tonight, Lord, we just pray that you would open the word of God to us, bless us, Lord, give us what we need, Lord, as we leave, that it would uh, help us to be better servants for you this, uh, in the remaining of this week. Now, Lord, we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for our salvation that's been provided. Thank you for your grace that goes with us day, uh, day by day, all throughout the day. Lord, we just praise you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Pat, for that. And I always enjoy our Wednesday prayer time. And thank you, church, for praying and using our prayer bulletin. I hope you'll take that uh, this week and use that. That's a wonderful tool to have and uh, to be able to take through and pray for those prayer requests and uh, all the different needs that we have there. And I believe if we took time, we would all say that we have unspoken requests. We all have things that we're praying for. And, uh, and so thankful for a church that prays. Tonight, we're going to continue our Wednesday night sermon series. And uh, simply, we've just called it Exploring the Psalms. And I've enjoyed uh, just, uh, if you've been in church any length of time, read your Bible, don't you just enjoy uh, the book of Psalms? And, uh, you know, we understand uh, that the book of Psalms is, is a collection of prayers, a collection of poems, a collection of hymns that focus uh, the worshiper's thoughts on God in praise and adoration. And uh, the book of Psalms is a great encouragement, is it not? It really is. It's a great encouragement and a wonderful place. Matter of fact, a wonderful place to turn to in times of distress. It's a wonderful place uh, to turn to in times of worry. It's a wonderful place, a wonderful book to turn to in times of hardships and uh, in times of trials. And uh, parts of the book uh, that we know, the book of Psalms, were used as hymns in ancient Israel's worship services. And the psalmist, we realize, declares that it reminds us, uh, declares that it reminds us of the marvelous God that we worship. How many would say he's marvelous tonight, amen? How many wants to worship him, amen? Of course you do. That's why you're here tonight. That's what we're doing. And uh, one who is high and lifted up beyond our human experiences, but also close enough to c- touch and who walks beside us along life's way. Aren't you grateful for that? Tonight, I want you to take your Bible to the book of Psalms. We're just picking out different chapters. We're going through uh, just some of the Psalms. Of course, we won't take time to go through all of them, and I don't know how long we'll go through the book of Psalms, and, uh, but I've been helped and encouraged through it. But I want you to turn all the way to Psalms chapter 3. That's right after chapter 2, right before chapter 4. Psalms chapter 3 is where we're going to find ourselves. We're going to read these verses And uh, you're going to, uh, these are familiar verses here, and I want us to look at uh, King David. This is David here writing, and I want us to look at this. Matter of fact, we'll we'll mention it again in a moment. Look at the top if you have a a study Bible. You'll see there at the top of your, uh, of Psalms 3, what does it say? A Psalm of David when he fled from who? Absalom, and Absalom was who? His son. So this is a Psalm of David that David wrote when he fled from his son Absalom. Now something should, if you were here last week, you should something maybe say, well, didn't we preach or talk about a psalm, something to do with Absalom and David? We're going to talk about that in a moment. We'll see how they kind of relate. Psalm chapter 3, you can remain seated here, but let's read the Word of God together. I'll begin in verse 1. Jump in and let you read every other verse with me. There's only eight verses here in Psalm 3. And so let's look at this. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Verse 2, church. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awakened for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, 
Save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Verse 8, church. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah. I want you to take your attention and look at verse 5 tonight. We're going to look at these verses, but I want you to notice verse 5. <coughs> verse 5 says, I laid me down and slept. Somebody say amen there. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, and get this, for the Lord sustained me. I love that. I laid me down and, and slept. I awakened, for the Lord sustained me. Tonight I want to preach on this thought here, overcoming restless nights. You ever had a restless night? I believe we all probably had. And if you're like me at times, you probably have had many of restless nights. Well, tonight I want us to look at this thought of overcoming restless nights because what we find in this passage of Scripture is obviously, and we know the life of David, even what we stu uh, studied last week, David was very overwhelmed. David dealt with stress. David dealt with worry. David was in the middle of big trials and hurts and all kinds of things. And obviously, I'm sure in David's life, he had some very restless nights. And tonight, though, what I find here in verse 5, as David laid him down to sleep and he awakened and the Lord sustained him, I see that he was able to overcome restless nights. How do we overcome restless nights? And let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll jump into this passage here this evening. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for this time. Once again, we can gather here as a church family. Lord God, we can pray for each other, pray for those on our sheet, pray for our missionaries. And God, I pray now that you would help us so now as we open your word. And Lord, we look at the writings of King David under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Lord. And Father, these writings that we find that are gathered here, Lord, in Scripture are here to encourage us and to help us. Father, no doubt there's someone seated here tonight maybe a little discouraged. Someone seated here tonight maybe a little worried. Somebody here tonight dealing with some anxiety, some stress. Somebody, Lord God, here tonight, Lord, that maybe is going through some trials and some tough times and hurts and pains, God. Lord, I'm thankful for the book of Psalms that you've given us, Lord, to encourage us and to help us. And Lord God, I pray, Lord, for that one that's restless tonight, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, as we can overcome those restless times in our life. We love you. We thank you. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Now, last week, we looked at Psalm 61. So tonight, we're in Psalm 3. Last week, we were in Psalm 61, and it was in this Psalm, Psalm 61, if you remember now, that David told us how to move from being stressed to blessed. You remember that message? Moving from stress to blessed. You remember uh, last week in Psalm 61 that David had heard of his son Absalom of his death. You remember that? And because uh, Absalom was, uh, had died now, David now is going to head back into Jerusalem. You remember as he's going to head back into Jerusalem, David was worried and he was overwhelmed by, by those who revolted with his son Absalom, pushing him out of Jerusalem, pushing David out. As David was to enter Jerusalem again, he had no clue, he wasn't for sure, of what he would face coming back into Jerusalem, taking over, uh, going back on the throne there. He, he, he was concerned, the opposition, and because of it, he was stressed. And because of it, we saw in Psalm 61, if you wasn't here for that message, you can go back and listen to it or go back and just read Psalm 61, and you'll sense his stress. You'll see he was overwhelmed. Yet what did David do in his time of being overwhelmed and stressed? He turned to the Lord. He turned to the Lord in the times of stress, worry, and anxiety. And guess what happened? God sustained him. Aren't you grateful for that? I'm thankful. Tonight now we come to Psalms 3, written by David. Now this was written before Absalom's death. So Psalm 61 was after his death. He's fixing to enter back into Jerusalem. 
Psalms 3 here is right before his death. As a matter of fact, this psalm, as I've already mentioned, uh, it has a title, When He Fled from Absalom, His Son. So this is a psalm of David, When He Fled from Absalom, His Son. So last week we saw David coming back into Jerusalem. This week we're seeing David going out of Jerusalem. So we're kind of going backwards in this thing, all right? Typically you might would say, okay, we're going to see David go out, then we're going to see David come in. What we're looking at from Psalm 61, we saw David coming in. Now we're going to back up to Psalm 3 and we're seeing David uh, 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 revolting, David, uh, 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 David fleeing Jerusalem there. And so what we find in this psalm tonight, it will convey to you and me what David was going through as he was fleeing for his life. It's going to give us uh, the scene and the background to what laid, uh, led David to uh, the stress and being overwhelmed, as we saw last week, remember, from being stressed to blessed. And, uh, and it will also show us that each and every day we will face times of stress and worry. You see, just because maybe you overcome that anxiety, overcome that worry, overcome that trial today, can I tell you something? There's a new day coming. Amen? And as soon as we get over that and God sustains us and helps us, listen, there's another day coming. Hey, we're all a phone call away. You, we, we, you hear me say that a lot. A one phone call can change everything. Amen? It can change everything. And so what we find is though David was stressed, Back when he was fixing to head in back into Jerusalem, we find also David was stressed as he's leaving Jerusalem. And it just reminds us that each and every day we're going to go through trials. Each and every day we're going to face hardships. Each and every day we're going to face difficult times as we walk this spiritual journey in which God has placed us. And uh, if you're like me, you probably have had many restless nights at times. Anybody uh, say you've had a restless night? Yeah, we've all had those times, uh, probably, where you've had restless nights. And I've had way too many of those, uh, matter of fact, at times. It's not always easy. You say, well, preacher, why? Well, can I say this? I'll just be uh, honest with you. I know I'm the preacher. Hey, but you know what? It's not always easy to let go and let God. Hey, it's not easy. I know we preach it. Hey, it's easy to preach messages. It's hard to live it. It's easy for us to give advice to people. It's hard to live up to the advice that we give to someone else. Amen? And uh, it's hard at times to let go and let God. And so we all find ourselves at times where we are restless, where because of worry, because of anxiety, because of stress, because of a trial, because of a situation. Hey, you ever just sat there in bed and your eyes are wide open in the middle of the night and you can't close your eyes? You can't go to sleep. It's just one of those restless nights. Tonight, overcoming restless nights. I found this poem. I want to read it. Pressed out of measure and pressed to all length. Pressed so intensely it seems beyond strength. Pressed in the body and pressed in the soul. Pressed in the mind till the dark surges roll. Pressure by foes and pressure by friends. Pressure on pressure till life nearly ends. You've been there? Overcoming restless nights. I want to take our Bibles now. And we'll put it on the screen as well. And I want us to look at 2 Samuel 15 tonight. It's very important because this kind of goes hand in hand with Psalms 3. It's here that we will get the background to Psalms 3. So I want us to get the background of Psalms 3 and we find it in 2 Samuel chapter 15. Notice verse 13. And there came a messenger to David. So this is King David who wrote this psalm, Psalm 3. And here's what the messenger said. The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. Uh-oh, he's turned the hearts, Absalom has, has turned the hearts of the men towards himself. You remember he was sitting at the gate there, if you remember the story there. Turning the hearts and listening to the people and all their complaints and all of those things. He was turning the hearts of the people toward himself. Verse 14, And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee. So here he goes. This is going to be his leaving Jerusalem. Let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. Could you imagine this? By the way, I, I have to stop here. This is David's son who has turned the hearts of the men 
to the fact that now he is running his own father out of Jerusalem. Verse 15, And the king's servants said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth, and all his household after him. And the king left the ten women, which were the concubines, to keep the house. Verse 17, And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was far off. So here we find the scene, the background of Psalms 3. Here is David in Psalms 3. He's writing this psalm when he has fled from Absalom. And so in in, in 2 Samuel 15, we find this uh, scene uh, unfolding here. Now as we look back, now go back to Psalms 3. Now stick with me for a moment. We're going somewhere, but I want you to see this. Now we're going to go back to Psalms 3. So we're kind of getting the background. Absalom is after his, uh, turning the hearts of the men, uh, trying to dethrone his father, and his father's on the run now. His servants and all those that are following him, they've gone, the Bible says, to a place far off. And now we come to Psalms 3, and I want you to see this again. So here we are. So this is David. He's on the run. His son is after him, or has pushed him out of, the, out of the city. Now look at Psalm 3. Lord, how are they that increase that troubled me? Many are they that rise up against me. This is talking about Absalom and, his, and all of those men that's following Absalom. Many there which say of my soul there is no help for him in God. Now notice this word. What is it again, church? Selah. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. So here's David on the run. His son has pushed him out of Jerusalem. He's on the run. But now he's saying, O Lord, you are a shield for me. You're my glory, the lifter of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with a voice, with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. And what's the next word, church? Selah. Verse 5, I laid me down and slept. I awakened for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people. Where was David laid his head? Where did he sleep? Where was he at? Wherever he was, he lay down, he slept, he awakened, the Lord sustained him. Look at this, verse 7. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. And what's that word, church? Selah. With this psalm, we notice something in here. Three times we see the word Selah is used. Now, this is the first time that we find this word being used in Scripture. But after this, and what we find altogether, it is used 74 times in the Bible, this word Selah. Most think, and what we know this word uh, to, to mean when we see this word Selah, it means to pause and to think. It's a, if we could say it this way, it's to take a moment of silence. It's a time to meditate. We are to really think about what was being said here as we come to David's Word. David's wanting us to pause. David's wanting us to meditate. David's wanting us to think about what is being said. Hey, take a moment of silence of what he is saying as he's here, as he's been ran out of Jerusalem. He's in a time where the enemies are against him. Could you imagine the stress? Could you imagine being overwhelmed? Could you imagine as he's taking his, his whole family with him, he's heading out, he goes afar off, the Bible says, and think about it. And we see David here in the midst of a very trying time. When life falls apart, here's a key thought for us tonight. I have it in your notes there. When life falls apart, when you feel restless, worried, and stressed, you can experience a restful night. Here's a good thing. When you feel restless, worried, and stressed, I want to tell you something tonight. You can still experience a restful night. We can experience God's peace By trusting in Him. And that's exactly what we're going to see here in this psalm. Look at Psalm 3, 5 again. I laid me down and slept. I awakened. Now get this. Look at the peace that God gave him. For the Lord, what? He sustained me. Tonight, I want to encourage someone in here tonight. Hey, that the Lord can give you peace in the midst of your trial. 
I want to encourage that one in here tonight that's restless. I want to encourage that one in here tonight that you're going through a, t- a tough time. Maybe a situation. I know I've mentioned this over these last several weeks. Hey, listen, uh, uh, but, but whatever you might be going through at work, at home, or whatever trial or situation or health situation, I've got some good news for you tonight. God can and will sustain you. Amen this evening. Overcoming restless nights. David relates his personal anguish that is brought on by the enemy. And despite the adversity, he is still able to call upon the Lord and have a good night's rest. Number one, write this down in your notes there. I want us to see the cause of a restless night. What was the cause of David's restless night? What was the cause uh, of a restless night that that God did sustain him where he could overcome this restless night? What was going on? Well, look at verse 1 again. Lord, how are they that increased that troubled me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. Letter A, uh, notice this. So here's the cause of David's, or the cause of a restless night. Number, uh, letter A, the multiplication of of his enemies. First of all, we see there was many enemies. There was many that was against David, and this, because of the enemies and because of the amount of enemies and all that was taking place, it could cause a restless night. It says again in verse 1, how were they, get this what, how are they what? Increased. How are they increased that trouble me? And get the next word, many are what? Many are they. Here we see the multiplication of his enemies. David recognized that his enemies were growing. We are not told in the Psalms how they were increased. We don't know when David says that my enemies have increased. We don't know, could this have been in number? Could people continue to have been uh, uh, following Absalom and the number was increasing? Uh, Could it have been that they were possibly increasing just in strength? Uh, Could it have been in dread or in terror? We don't know how they increased. But all we do know is that there was many things that David was wrestling with and the trial in the enemy was great. You ever been there? Where it seems like on top of one thing, on top of another thing, you go from one situation, you think, whoo, and then all of a sudden something else happened. And all of a sudden, well, I got through this trial. Hey, can I remind us we're either coming out of a trial or we're going into a trial? Amen. Many are, uh, many, uh, are uh, many were uh, they that rise up against me, David said. So here's the cause of a restless night. Hey, the multiplication of enemies, but also notice this, letter B, the misery of his enemies. Not only were they increased, not only were there many, but notice the misery of the enemies. Notice what David says and how he said, Lord, how are they increased, get this, that what? Trouble me. That troubled me. These weren't just any type of enemies. These were enemies that were troubling David. Hey, to the point that can cause a restless night. The word trouble here, it literally means being placed in a very tight circumstance. Hey, meaning miserable anguish. You ever been there? You ever found yourself in a place that's miserable anguish? In a place where you felt very tight circumstance? Hey, take a balloon. If we were to blow up a balloon and we begin to push it and to squeeze it. Hey, listen to me. And as it's being squeezed and squeezed more and more, you ever felt like a balloon where on every size, every side of you, you're being squeezed in all kinds of areas? It could be, hey, things going on at home, things going on at work, things going on in your personal life, things going on in this area and that area, and you feel like, wow, You see the misery of the enemies that are all around you. You're just trouble everywhere you turn. You feel like you're uh, just stepping into a problem. So we see the misery of his enemies that can cause a restless night. We see the me, the me of his enemies. What do you mean, preacher? Well, look at verse 1. Lord, how are they increased that troubled what? Me. Troubled me. Tonight, we all understand that not just the person beside you walks through troubles, but so do we. We all. Everything that we go through, uh, are, we all go through troubles. And, uh, you know, uh, I've heard people say, you know, well, I, I don't have an emergency like that person or the situation that I'm going through and walking through, it's not as great as that. You know what I found? It doesn't matter what you're going through. It's a big deal. 
It's a big deal. Just because maybe Brother Pat's going through this or Miss Jenny's going through that, and we look at situations like, well, those are big deals. No, all of us, when we go through troubles, it's a big deal to us. Amen. We all go through troubles. We all go through hurts. We all go through pains. Hey, which can cause a restless night. What are you going through tonight? We see the misery of his enemies. We see the me of his enemies. Hey, it was they troubled me. This was a personal attack on David by the enemies. And I want to remind us in here tonight, the devil is on the prowl and he wants to attack you personally. Amen. And by the way, he's good at doing that. He's good at doing that. But we see the message of his enemies, letter D. Notice the message of his enemies. Notice what the enemy is saying to David. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Do you see the message of the enemy? Here's King David, a man after God's own heart. Here's King David that God put on the throne, by the way, there in Jerusalem. And notice this, what the enemies are saying to David, there is no help for him in God. You see what the enemy is saying? Even God has turned his back on David. I want to tell you something. We have to be very careful of the things that we allow into our minds. And if we're not careful, we can fill in our blanks and we can begin thinking things that just aren't true. Can I tell you something? God had not turned his back on David. But the enemy wanted to make sure, trying to tell him that the God had turned his back and there was no help for him. Hey, everyone had admired David. Now they were doubting him. The enemy has always lied to the people of God. Amen? Hey, by the way, we see it all the way back in Genesis. We see it all the way back in Genesis where the devil lied. And by the way, he's still lying today. So often we succumb to the enemy and we find ourselves experiencing restless nights because we have bought into the devil's tricks and lies. Hey, somebody says, you're no good. Hey, we, we believe the enemy. Hey, the devil tells us we're no good. Hey, we can't get over this. We'll never defeat this. We'll never overcome this addiction, this stronghold. Hey, yes, we can. We can trust God. We can. Don't let the enemy beat us up. Amen. David had many things against him at this time. The enemy and opposition, opposition were great, and no doubt it could cause many sleepless and restless nights. So where do you find yourself tonight? You see, I believe in here tonight, there's some in here, you say, preacher, I'm restless right now. You say, the enemy's great. The opposition is great. The trials, the hurts, the pains. I, I, I'm feeling it, preacher. Hey, the misery. I've even, let, I, I, I've even let my mind, I haven't controlled my mind lately, and I'm thinking things I shouldn't be thinking, and I, I, I'm in a dark place. I'm in a dark place spiritually. I'm in a dark place mentally. Preacher, I, I, I'm in this place of restlessness. Well, number two, notice this, the care of restless nights. The care of restless night. Notice this, it says in verse 3. So David, we see the enemies, we see the trouble, we see their message, we see the personal attack on David. But notice verse 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. Somebody say amen. My glory and the lifter of mine head, I cried unto the Lord with, uh, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. He heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. You know what I notice here? Yes, we see the cause of a restless night. The enemies were great. Yes, the enemies were attacking David in all kinds of ways. In his mind, in his thought, the things that they were saying, all of those things, just like the enemy does for us. But what I notice, even though David was on the run, even though David uh, wasn't sleeping in his own bed, even when David was, uh, his own son was against him, we find something here. We see the care for David. You see, notice this letter A, David's covering for a restful night. David's covering. Here's his covering. By the way, don't you like just a good cover when it's time to go to sleep? You know, I want a nice, I want it cold in my house. I want it cold. I don't want it hot. I want it cold and I want a nice blanket on me. Anybody like those weighted blankets? Uh, some people like those weighted blankets. Let, let's look at the covering because what we find here in David is not a blanket. I want you to see the covering of David that brought a restful night. Notice this in verse 3. But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. Here's the covering of David. Here's the care of David. Here's what brought David, hey, how he could overcome a restless night. Lord, thou art a shield for me. David acknowledged that the Lord was his shield of protection in life's greatest battles. What's your battle tonight? 
Can I tell you something in here? If you're saved and born again, He is our shield of protection as well. Amen. What a comfort that is this evening. You see, I don't know what you're walking through and what you're going through, but I do know this, that God, hey, is on the throne and His shield, He, he, he will protect us and help us in life's greatest battles. David didn't care, uh, carry a literal shield in the fight against Goliath. He had the Lord. you remember that? It was the Lord who helped him, and it's the Lord who will help you tonight. Here's what can help us overcome a restless night. When we understand that truly God surrounds us, and God sustains us. I don't know what you're going through, but God knows about it. And God will surround you, and God will sustain you as we walk through those very tough times. Notice Psalms 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in Him, and I am what, church? I'm helped. You need to be helped tonight? God will help you. Hey, Psalms 119, 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. So we see David's covering, hey, for a restful night, but I notice David's, David's comfort for a restful night. Look at this, just going through this psalm here, verse 3. O Lord, art a shield for me. Now get this, my glory and the lifter of mine head. This was the comfort that David needed. When his son was against him, his son turned the hearts of his men. David's on the run. David's laying his head down now in a place that wasn't his own bed. Hey, wherever he was at, but he found comfort. Why? Because he says, my glory, God is my glory and the lifter of mine head. With the Lord, by the way, we can keep our heads up. Hey, it doesn't matter what we're going through. We don't have to put our heads down. We might not like what we're going through. It might be tough times. But listen, we can keep our head up because God is the lifter. Uh, as David said, He's the lifter of my head. Amen. What confidence we have every night when we pillow our heads, knowing we can find comfort and a restful night in the Lord. Listen to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians. He said this in verse 8 of chapter 4. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but notice this, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Paul found comfort in the Lord, and so can you and I tonight. Amen. Our comfort is in the Lord. And he too could overcome restless nights. Paul could because of the great care of the Lord. Psalms 121.1, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Let her see, notice this, David's cry for a restful night. So you want to overcome a restless night? We're getting it. Here it is, church. Here it is. We see David's comfort. We see David's covering. We see, let her see, David's cry. He said, I cried, verse 4, unto the Lord with my voice. I cried. We saw this last week. You remember, this is David, this is David now uh, 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 going out of the city. Last week, we saw David coming back into Jerusalem. But it didn't matter if he was going out or he was coming in. You know what we noticed about David? David continually cried unto the Lord. Aren't you glad that we can go to God at any moment, at any time, and we can cry unto Him? You know what? We don't just get a card, a one-time card. You know, did you ever, what was that uh, game show where you called a friend? I can't, uh, millionaire something. Who wants to... Be, I want to be a millionaire. Who wants to be a millionaire? Yeah, the, uh, that game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And they'd ask you these questions and all that. And they had one time you could phone a friend. You could pick up the phone and you could ask them. You had so many seconds to say, here's the question. Do you know the answer? And they're uh, going very quick to ask the question. And, and hopefully their friend might would know it real quick. You know, I'm thinking if I was that friend, I'd have them ready to go on Google, you know. Have them ready to go. But, but there they are like, do you know the question? Do you know the question? And all of a sudden the timer's going, the timer's going. to go, bang, time's up. Too late. You can't call them again. I've got good news. We can call God over and over and over and over again. That's what we find, David. You know what our comfort? There's nothing new tonight. Nothing new that all of us haven't already heard. But I find, and I've, I know I've said this so many times, so often the things that we know we ought to do, we just don't do it. In our times of restlessness, our times of hurts and trials, I want to tell you we have a covering. I want to tell you there truly is care and we can find comfort. Hey, and I want to remind us in here that we can go to God and we can cry out to Him. At any moment and at any time, we can cry out to the Lord. You see, we need to understand something this evening. Please get this. Although David was removed from his palace, get this, this is good. 
Although David was removed from his palace and from his throne, the Lord was still sitting on his throne in his holy hill. You see, though David was removed from the throne... And David was thrown out of the palace. I want to tell you something in here tonight. The Lord was still on His throne. And by the way, He's still on the throne tonight. No matter what we're going through, we feel pushed out. We feel like the weight of the world is on us. God is still on the throne. In Psalms 3 verse 7, David says, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. Here's a quote that I came across. I'll tell you, uh, and here's the quote. I'll tell you, whenever we find ourselves in circumstances where life is against us and we're experiencing such stress that we cannot even get a night's sleep, we need to give ourselves to prayer and pour out our hearts to God and say, Arise, O God. We see letter D, David's confidence for a restful night. We just have a few moments here. We're closing up. Here's David's confidence. David was able to overcome a restless night in the midst of great opposition. Could you imagine being run out, pushed out by your own son? He was able to find rest even against great opposition because he had full confidence and full trust in the Lord. Here's where I believe we fail so often. We will put our trust in Jesus Christ for salvation, but will we put our trust in Him when it comes to a situation, our trial, our hurts, our pain? or whatever we're going through. We need to fully trust Him. David had confidence in God. He fully trusted Him. It says in verse 5, how do you know that, preacher? Because notice what he did. In the midst of his enemies and being ran out, you know what he did? Look what it says. I laid me down. His confidence was in God. So much so that he found a place and he laid himself down and he went to sleep. You see, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon Him, for He cared for you. That's what David was doing. God, I'm giving it to you. God, this is your throne. God, this is your city. These are your people. And God, I'm giving it to you. I'm trusting you. Philippians 4, 6. What does the Bible say? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That sounds like one who can overcome a restless night when we find confidence in the Lord. Number three, the calm of a restless night. So we see... We see the calls. The enemies were great. And no doubt we're facing enemies tonight. But I want to tell you, there's great comfort. We can find comfort. And here's the calm. Look at verse 5. I laid me down and slept. I awakened, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people. Look at this. Look at this. The comfort, the calm that David has now. I'll not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for Thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon Thy people. You see what I notice in David's life? There was a calm. There was a calm. You see, David could pillow his head even when all was against him and could be calm and find great rest. You know what I notice? Letter A. We notice this, the peace he discovered. Look at verse 5 again. I laid me down, and what does it say? He slept. David overcame a restless night. David overcame his stress. David overcame being overwhelmed and the worry and anxiety so much to the point that he found himself a place. He lay down and he slept and he says, I awaken for the Lord sustained me. You know what David found? David found peace. He discovered peace. He found peace through the night. And when he awoke, he realized that the Lord had sustained him. The word sustained means to lay hold or to carry. He fell asleep in the hands of God. He found peace from his adversaries. Tonight, when you pillow your head, and we're going to do it in just a few hours, would you think about this? Think about the message. And as you pillow your head and your mind, if, it's, if your mind's like my mind, my mind will race of a hundred different things, thousands of things. But tonight, Lord, I'm pillowing my head. In the midst of all that's going through, Maybe with a family member, maybe at a church, maybe with whatever it might be. God, whatever's going through, I'm pillowing my head tonight and I'm going to get rest because I'm going to trust you and you're in control 
and you know all about it. I'm casting my cares upon you. And I want to tell you something. Listen, we can wake up. We can wake up knowing God will sustain us. Amen. And He will help us and we can find peace. Look at this letter B, the praise He declared. You see, with the Lord there was nothing to fear. And notice David's praise. He awakes. He noticed the, the Lord had sustained him. And look at verse 7. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. Notice this praise. For thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. David took pleasure in the notion that God had brought him through the night. And God will bring us through our night as well. What is, the, what is that that you're walking through, ma'am, sir, tonight? What is it that you're wrestling with? Listen, as we pillow our head tonight, will we just turn it over to God? God, I don't know about this situation. I don't know how we're going to get through this situation. I don't know how we're going to handle this. God, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just can't see the end. But God, I'm going to trust you and my confidence lies in you and you will help me get through this. And so tonight, God, I'm going to ask you, would you help me to close my eyes? Would you help me to get sleep as I put my trust and find peace in you? As we wake up in the morning, hey, what a wonderful thing just to be able to praise God and say, God, you got me through another night, and I'm going to praise you today. Amen. Thank God for the peace He brings to His children. When trouble comes, get in the habit of going to God. The Lord is worthy of trust, therefore we must trust Him. Remember our key thoughts. When life falls apart, when you feel restless, worried, stressed, you can experience a restful night. We can experience God's peace by trusting in Him. I laid me down and slept. I awakened, for the Lord sustained me. Father, we thank You, Lord, that in our dark days, in our dark hours, in our difficult times, whatever it might be, Lord God, Lord, we can find rest in You. Lord, we can find peace in You. Father, it's not easy, just to be honest, Lord, it's not easy. Lord, because our flesh, our human nature, our sinful body, Lord God, this flesh that we wrestle with, Lord God, it's easy to worry, to fret. It's easy to let it bother us, but God, you want us to give it all to you. And Father, just as we trust you with salvation, that we would trust you in whatever we're going through. And knowing, God, that you know what's best for us. And God, I pray tonight, even as we pillow our head tonight, it would just be a reminder of the message that, God, you're with us. God, that you love us. God, you're going to bring comfort. And, God, we're going to trust you. And, Lord, as we close our eyes and we move ourselves into another morning, if you would allow us to wake, Lord God, Lord, that we would just praise you and honor you, Lord God, and thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, we thank you for your, the Word of God. We love you. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Ain't God good? Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. Hope you get a wonderful night of rest. Amen. I will lift.